students, welcome to the lecture on materials management. And after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the concept of material management and its scope. Define integrated waste management. Explain inventory control or management understand the purchasing systems, describe ergonomics, human engineering, discuss on-store management, explain the term codification, describe the concept of value analysis. Let's start with the introduction of materials management. Materials management is simply the process by which an organization is supplied with the goods and services that it needs to achieve its objectives of buying, storage, and movement of materials. Materials management is related to planning, procuring, storing and providing the appropriate material of the right quality, right quantity, at the right place, in the right time, so as to coordinate and schedule the production activity in an integrative way. Concepts of Materials Management Materials management is a total concept having its definite organization to plan and control all types of materials, its supply and its flow from the raw stage to the finished stage so as to deliver the product to the customer as per their requirements in time. This involves materials planning, purchasing, receiving, storing, inventory control, scheduling, production, physical distribution and marketing. It also controls the materials handling and its traffic. Materials planning and control. Materials required for any operation are based on the sales forecasts and production plans. Planning and control is done for the materials, taking into account the materials not available for the operation and those in hand or in pipeline. Purchasing. Basically, the job of a materials manager is to provide to the user departments the right material at the right time in the right quantity of the right quality at the right price from the right source. Inventory control. One of the powerful ways of controlling the materials is through inventory control. It covers aspects such as setting inventory levels, doing various analysis such as ABC, XYZ, etc., fixing economic order quantities, EOQ, setting safety stock levels, lead time analysis, and reporting. Scope of Materials Management Materials management strives to ensure that the material cost component of the total product cost be the least. In order to achieve this, the control is exercised in the following fields. Materials planning, purchasing, storekeeping, inventory control. Advantages of integrated materials management. Organizations which have gone in a big way for the integrated materials management usually enjoy the following advantages. Better accountability. Through centralization of authority and responsibility for all aspects of materials function, clear-cut accountability is established. This helps in evaluating the performance of materials management in an objective manner. Better coordination. When a central materials manager is responsible for all functions, the departments under the materials manager create an identity which is common. 
Let us now discuss the integrated waste management. Integrated waste management is a systematic approach that uses multiple methods to control and dispose of waste. It emphasizes in prioritized order source reduction, reuse, and recycling efforts. Europe is a nice place with some really great people, but man do we love to throw things away. In fact, the average European junks about 525 kilograms of waste each year. I mean, that's a whole lot of stuff. And much of it really is stuff as opposed to waste. Useful stuff. Worth money. All in all, it's just a waste of waste, isn't it? It's pretty hard on your back, too. So, what can you do about it? Stay tuned. OK, so you've got your half a tonne of waste, which might not make you half a tonne of money, but it could make you some. And off we go. A lot of the stuff in the bag is pretty useful as it is. Some bottles just need a wash up and a new cap. And old clothes and furniture come back into fashion before you know it. Some of it might need a bit of repair, but hey, that's job creation right there. Can't be a bad thing, can it? That's it, we're talking reuse. You might need to spend some money to make this happen, but since useful stuff is valuable, you'll get it back. And then some. Now, some of your waste might be useless in itself, but made out of good stuff, like metal, glass, paper and cardboard, all of which can be utilised again if you treat it right. And in fact, some of the really weird stuff used in electronic gadgets is so scarce that we actually need to use it again, if we don't want to run out. And yes, it's called recycling. Of course, collecting and processing isn't free, but here's the clever bit. Recycling turns your waste into useful stuff that can be sold. Shazam! Money in the bank, mate. And as if by magic, new jobs will appear as well. So, how's your back then? Better, eh? Looking good. OK, let's go. Let's have a look at what's left in the bag. Food leftovers, used cooking oil, some wooden paper, lots of plastic and ew, smelly stuff like cat litter and used diapers that sadly can't be reused or recycled. Or can it? Actually, it can. If you burn it to generate power and heat buildings and collect the biogas to use as fuel, it might not smell of roses, but hey, this is useful stuff. Of course, you need to make some initial investments, but in the long run, burning waste is definitely a whole lot cheaper than burning oil or coal. Same with greenhouse gas emissions. No contest, really. And then there's job creation again. This neat little trick is known as energy recovery. Not much left in the bag, is there? A whole lot less than half a tonne, that's for sure. Time to get rid of what's left at that place we all know and hate as the dump. Sadly, it can't be avoided completely. Some waste is simply useless and won't even burn. Ah well. Of course, you don't want poisons lying about, so harmful stuff needs to be securely destroyed or stored out of harm's way. Safety first, of course. And there's job opportunities there as well. But hang on a second. Do you really need to create that much waste to begin with? Come on, it's half a tonne for crying out loud. Of course you don't. We could all begin by actually eating the food we produce. Today, half of it goes into the bin somewhere along the line. I mean, that's just wrong. Another good idea is to steer clear of disposable containers and packaging. And why not try reading the paper online instead of on paper? And so on. The trick is to reduce the amount of stuff you throw away in the first place. So there you have it. And you know, the cool thing is that all this is being done all over Europe as we, or rather I, speak. For instance, in Norrköping, Sweden, four local fuel and power companies literally live off each other's waste. The stuff that one company discards becomes the next one's raw material. And round and round it goes. Brilliant! Meanwhile, in Hungary, a mushroom growing company have this really sweet sideline going. An electric power plant fueled by biogas made from mushroom scraps and used growing substrate that produces marketable green power. 
I mean, how clever is that? And in Cumbria, in the UK, the county waste management people have worked with teachers and pupils to turn the Cockermouth School into a sustainable school. This is good news in more ways than one. Not only does the school chuck away a whole lot less than before, but the pupils have become expert reusers, recyclers and reducers in the process. And that's vital. After all, we're not born with sustainability skills. We all need to learn them. It's not like it's rocket science or anything, or it would be Stephen Hawking telling you this and not me. But still, knowledge is power. Green power. So, education and information is a big piece of the puzzle, no doubt. Costly, sure. But then again, you need to create jobs, don't you? I mean, let's face it, wasting your waste is such a waste. Benefits of Integrated Waste Management The benefits of integrated waste management include greater service coordination of procurement and waste management among local government departments and agencies can lead to more efficient service delivery and cost savings. MSW is a clean waste stream that requires less processing. Comprehensive waste stream analysis. Waste characterization, waste stream analysis, are methods used to determine the types of materials being discarded in a waste stream and in what proportion. Extended producer responsibility policies. Extended producer responsibility, EPR, policies are based on the idea that the polluter pays. Selection of suppliers. Selection of the right supplier is the responsibility of the purchase department. It can contribute substantially to the fundamental objectives of the business enterprise. Sources of supplier. The best buying is possible only when the decision maker is familiar with all possible sources of supply and their respective terms and conditions. Now we will study the inventory control or management. Inventory generally refers to the materials in stock. It is also called the idle resource of an enterprise. Inventories represent those items which are either stocked for sale or they are in the process of manufacturing or they are in the form of materials which are yet to be utilized. Reasons for keeping inventories. There are many reasons for keeping inventories. To stabilize production. The demand for an item fluctuates because of the number of factors. Example, seasonality, production schedule, etc. To prevent loss of orders. In this competitive scenario, one has to meet the delivery schedules at a 100% service level, which means they cannot afford to miss the delivery schedule which may result in loss of sales. Meaning of inventory control. Inventory control is a planned approach of determining what to order, when to order, how much to order, and how much to stock so that costs associated with buying and storing are optimal without interrupting production and sales. Objectives of inventory control. To ensure adequate supply of products to the customer and avoid shortages as far as possible. To make sure that the financial investment in inventories is minimum. Example, to see that the working capital is blocked to the minimum possible extent. Benefits of inventory control. It is an established fact that through the practice of scientific inventory control, 
The benefits of inventory control are improvement in the customer's relationship because of the timely delivery of goods and service, smooth and uninterrupted production, and hence, no stock out. Inventory model. Inventory models deal with idle resources like men, machines, money, and materials. These models are concerned with two decisions, how much to order, purchase, or produce, and when to order, so as to minimize the total cost. Did you know modern hazardous waste regulations in the U.S. began with the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, RCRA, which was enacted in 1976? Let us get to know about purchasing systems. Some of the important purchasing systems are Forward buying. Forward buying or committing an organization far into the future, usually for a year depending upon the availability of the item, the financial policies, the economic order quantity, the quantitative discounts, and the staggered delivery is how the future commitment is decided. Tender buying. In public, all semblance of favoritism, personal preferences should be avoided. Blanket order system. This system minimizes the administrative expenses and is useful for C type items. It is an agreement to provide a required quantity of specified items over a period of time, usually for one year, at an agreed price. Deliveries are made depending upon the buyer's needs. Zero stock. Some firms try to operate on the basis of zero stock, and the supplier holds the stock for these firms. Usually, the firms of the buyer and seller are close to each other so that the raw materials of one are the finished products of another. Rate contract. The system of rate contract is prevalent in public sector organizations and government departments. It is common for the suppliers to advertise that they are on rate contract for the specific period. Reciprocity. Reciprocal buying means purchasing from one's customers in preference to others. It is based on the principle, if you kill my cat, I will kill your dog, and do unto your customers as you would have them do unto you. Other things like soundness from ethics and economics, point of view being equal, the principles of reciprocity can be practiced. However, the purchasing executive should not indulge in reciprocity on this initiative when the terms and conditions are not equal with other suppliers. It is often those less efficient manufacturers and distributors who gain by reciprocity what they are unable to gain by price and quality. Since this tends to discourage competition and might lead to higher process and fewer suppliers, reciprocity should be practiced on a selective basis. The word ergonomics has its origin in two Greek words, ergon meaning work and nomos meaning laws. So it is the study of the man in relation to his work. It is called by the name human engineering or human factors engineering. Human engineering is defined as the application of human biological sciences along with engineering sciences to achieve optimal mutual adjustment of man and his work, the benefits being measured in terms of human efficiency and well-being. The human factors or human engineering is concerned with man-machine system. Thus, another definition which highlights the man-machine system is the design of human tasks, man-machine system, and effective accomplishment of the job, 
including displays for presenting information to human sensors, controls for human operations, and complex man-machine systems. Human engineering focuses on human beings and their interaction with products, equipment facilities, and environments used in work. Human engineering seeks to change the things people use and the environment in which they use the things to match in a better way the capabilities, limitations, and needs of people. Objectives of Human Engineering Human Engineering Ergonomics has two broader objectives. One, to enhance the efficiency and effectiveness with which the activities work are carried out so as to increase the convenience of use, reduce errors, and increase in productivity. Two, to enhance certain desirable human values, including safety, reduced stress, fatigue, and improved quality of life. Stores play a vital role in the operations of a company. It is in direct touch with the user departments and its day-to-day -day activities. The most important purpose served by the stores is to provide uninterrupted service to the manufacturing divisions. Further, stores are often equated directly with money, as money is locked up in the stores. Functions of stores the functions of stores are 1. To receive raw materials, components, tools, equipment, as well as other items and account for them. 2. To provide adequate, proper storage and preservation to the various items. 3. To meet the demands of the consuming departments by proper issues and account for the consumption. Four to minimize obsolescence, surplus, and scrap through proper codification, preservation, and handling. Codification is a process of representing each item by a number, the digit of which indicates the group, the subgroup, the type, and the dimension of the item. Many organizations in the public and private sector railways have their own system of codification, varying from 8 to 13 digits. The first two digits represent the major groups, such as raw materials, spare parts, subcontracted items, hardware items, packing material, tools, oil, and stationery, etc. The next two digits indicate the subgroups, such as ferrous and non-ferrous, etc. Dimensional characteristics of length, width, and head diameter, etc constitute the further three digits, and the last digit is reserved for minor variations. Whatever may be the basis, each code should uniquely represent one item. Objectives of codification. The objectives of a rationalized material coding system are, one, bringing all items together, two, to enable putting up of any future item in its proper place. Three, to classify an item according to its characteristics. Four, to give a unique code number to each item to avoid duplication and ambiguity. Advantages of codification. As a result of rationalized codification, many firms have reduced the number of items. It enables systematic grouping of similar items and avoids confusion caused by long descriptions of items. Since standardization of names is achieved through codification, it serves as the starting point of simplification and standardization. It helps in avoiding duplication of items and results in the minimization of the number of items, leading to an accurate record. Codification enables easy recognition of an item in stores, thereby reducing clerical efforts to the minimum. Value analysis is defined as an organized creative approach, which has its objective, the efficient identification of unnecessary cost, which provides neither quality, nor use, nor life, nor appearance, nor customer features. 
Value analysis focuses engineering, manufacturing, and purchasing attention to one objective, equivalent performance at a lower cost. Value analysis is concerned with the costs added due to inefficient or unnecessary specifications and features. It makes its contribution in the last stage of the product cycle, namely the maturity stage. At this stage, research and development no longer make positive contributions in terms of improving the efficiency of the functions of the product or adding new functions to it. Steps in value analysis. In order to answer the above questions, three basic steps are necessary. Identifying the function. Any useful product has some primary function which must be identified. A bulb to give light, a refrigerator to preserve food, etc. In addition, it may have secondary functions such as withstanding shock, etc. These two must be identified. Evaluation of the function by comparison. Value being a relative term the comparison approach must be used to evaluate functions. The basic question is, does the function accomplish reliability at the best cost and can it be answered only by comparison? Develop alternatives. Realistic situations must be faced. Objections should overcome and effective engineering, manufacturing, and other alternatives must be developed. In order to develop effective alternatives and identify unnecessary cost to the value analysis principles to be used are avoid generalities, get all available costs, use information only from the best source, brainstorming sessions, in the blast stage, alternative productive products, materials, processes, or ideas are generated. In the create stage, the ideas generated in the blast stage are used to generate alternatives which accomplish the function almost totally. In the refining stage, the alternatives generated are sifted and refined so as to arrive at the final alternative to be implemented identify and overcome roadblocks. Use industry specialists to extend specialized knowledge. Key tolerance not to be too light. Utilize the pay for vendors skills techniques. Utilize vendors available functional products. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Materials management is a total concept, having its definite organization to plan and control all types of materials, its supply, and its flow from the raw stage to the finished stage. Integrated waste management is a systematic approach that uses multiple methods to control and dispose of waste. Just in time, JIT, manufacturing is a philosophy rather than a technique. Inventory generally refers to the materials in stock. It is also called the idle resource of an enterprise. Codification is a process of representing each item by a number, the digit of which indicates the group, the subgroup, the type and the dimension of the item.